Let's study about middle cranial fossa. Middle cranial fossa is the part of uh, cranial cavity which is the middle part of cranial cavity. It is limited anteriorly by the posterior border of lesser wing of sphenoid on each side. And medial to the lesser wing of sphenoid, the tooth like projection is anterior clinoid processes. And in between the two anterior clinoid processes, the groove is sulcus chasmatus. So these structures form anterior boundary of middle cranial fossa. Now have a look over the posterior boundaries. So posteriorly it is bounded by superior border of petrous part of temporal bone and dorsum cella which is the posterior projection of body of the sphenoid and on each side of dorsum cella the angular projections are posterior clinoid processes. So these structures form the posterior boundary of middle cranial fossa. Laterally the middle cranial fossa is limited by greater wing of sphenoid, anterior inferior angle of parietal bone and squamous part of temporal bone. Now have a look over the floor. The floor of middle cranial fossa for our learning purpose we can divide it as central portion and lateral portion. Central portion is formed by the body of the sphenoid and lateral portion is formed by the greater wing of sphenoid, squamous part of temporal bone and anterior surface of petrous temporal. Now moving on to the features, we shall begin with the body of the sphenoid which occupies the center portion. It is again divided into sulcus chasmatus which is a transversely running groove just behind jugum sphenoidale. This sulcus chasmatus, it is named after its relation with optic chasma, the crossing over of optic nerve. But one point to remember here, optic chasma never comes in contact with sulcus chasmatus, but it lies posterior superior to sulcus. And now trace along the medial side of the posterior border of lesser wing of sphenoid, we know the tooth like projections are anterior clinoid processes which are present on each side gives attachment to free margin of tentorium cerebelli. There is a canal hiding below this anterior clinoid process called as optic canal and this canal connects the middle cranial fossa with the orbit. It transmits optic nerve, ophthalmic artery an optic nerve is surrounded by meninges which continues with the outer layer of eyeball. Next feature of the body of the sphenoid is tuberculum cella. What is this tuberculum cella? It is an elevation just behind the sulcus chasmatus. So the sulcus chasmatus is limited by tuberculum cella. What is the importance of this? It gives attachment to a fold of dura mater and on each side of tuberculum cella the small tiny projections are middle clinoid processes and this tuberculum cella provides anterior attachment of diaphragma cella. We know in anatomy diaphragm means a partition. So this fold of dura mater is like a partition which separates pituitary fossa underneath it and the brain, cranial cavity, rest of the cranial cavity. Diaphragma cella is a flat piece of fold of dura mater which having a circular opening through which the stalk of pituitary gland passes through. And this partition separates the pituitary fossa from rest of the cranial cavity and this structure retains pituitary gland underneath it. So the structure roofs the pituitary fossa or hypophyseal fossa. Pituitary fossa is otherwise known as cella tersica. Cella tersica means Turkish saddle. So deep to the body of the sphenoid, the air sinuses are sphenoidal air sinuses which are present below the floor of hypophyseal fossa. 
Posteriorly, the diaphragm cella attaches to a posterior projection of the body of the sphenoid called as dorsum cella. Dorsum cella means back of Turkish saddle. Superior angles of dorsum cella forms posterior clinoid processes. So these posterior clinoid processes deepen the cella tersica and gives attachment to tentorium cerebelli. So this completes the middle part of body of the sphenoid. And moving on to on each side. So laterally on each side the body of the sphenoid is related to a faint sulcus called as carotid sulcus. Carotid sulcus is observed as a shallow groove on each side of the body of sphenoid. And this groove is related to internal carotid artery. As the name says carotid sulcus, it is related to internal carotid artery along with its sympathetic plexus. So what is the importance of this groove is, it is related to cavernous sinus. So it forms the part of cavernous sinus. So the internal carotid artery that is the cavernous part of internal carotid artery is present in this carotid sulcus. Laterally, the lateral part of the middle cranial fossa lodges temporal lobes of brain. So they are deep and they are uneven because they are related to sulci and gyri of temporal lobes. So talking about these lateral areas, it is related anteriorly to orbit laterally to the temporal fossa and inferiorly to infratemporal fossa. Now observe the posterior border of lesser wing of sphenoid. Beneath the lesser wing of sphenoid, there is a triangular gap. This gap is superior orbital fissure. So this triangular gap is between the lesser and greater wings of sphenoid and medially it is bounded by the body of sphenoid. It is a long fissure which communicates middle cranial fossa with the orbit anteriorly. The lower border of the fissure shows a projection which gives attachment to common tendinous ring of Zen. This musculotendinous ring gives origin to few muscles of extraocular muscles surrounding the eyeball. And this ring divides the superior orbital fissure into three parts, lateral, middle and medial. Now we shall see the structures passing through each part. So starting with the lateral part of superior orbital fissure transmits lacrimal nerve, frontal nerve, trochlear nerve, superior ophthalmic vein, meningeal branch of lacrimal artery, orbital branch of middle meningeal artery. So these are the structures passing through the lateral part. From the center that is within the common annular tendon from the middle part the structures are upper and lower divisions of oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve supplying most of the extraocular muscles, nasociliary abducent, abducent is the sixth cranial nerve, nasociliary is a branch of ophthalmic division of trigeminal. So we know ophthalmic nerve supplies general sensory supply around the eye in and around the orbit. So this ophthalmic nerve before entering the superior orbital fissure it divides into three branches lacrimal, frontal, nasociliary. Lacrimal frontal we have already seen in the lateral part. Nasociliary passes through the middle part of superior orbital fissure. Lastly, the medial part of superior orbital fissure, the structures passing through are inferior ophthalmic vein and a small twigs of sympathetic nerves along the vein. So these are the structures. So there are many structures through superior orbital fissure. To remember this, we will make a mnemonic. I slept one night and left for Tokyo. I stands for inferior ophthalmic vein, S for superior ophthalmic vein and sympathetic nerves, O for oculomotor, that is the third cranial, N nasociliary, 
A. abducent, L. lacrimal, and T. trochlear. So, this is a simple mnemonic. You can make your own mnemonic to remember the structures passing through superior orbital fissure. Now, we shall talk about the foramens present in the greater wing of spinoid. The first and foremost foramen which is present just below the superior orbital fissure is foramen rotundum. Rotundum means round. So, this foramen is quite round and it is oriented anteriorly. This circular opening is not visible in norma basalis because this opening is oriented anteriorly towards pterygopalatine fossa. The fossa between the maxilla and the pterygoid process of palatine bone. The structures transmitting through foramen rotundum is maxillary nerve. So, the maxillary nerve after crossing foramen rotundum, it gets dilated to form pterygopalatine ganglion. The next important and most prominently seen foramen is foramen ovale, which we have already seen in Norma basalis also. And this foramen ovale transmits four structures and the mnemonic is male, M-A-L-E. M for mandibular nerve, A for accessory meningeal artery, L lesser petrosal nerve and E emissary vein. So these are the structures passing through foramen ovale. So we have seen three branches of trigeminal nerve passing through each foramen. Foramen ovale, mandibular nerve. Foramen rotundum, maxillary nerve and superior orbital fissure, branches of ophthalmic nerve. Next to foramen ovale on posterolateral to foramen ovale, the smaller one is foramen pinosum. It is named spinosum because in norma basalis, this foramen spinosum is related to the spine of spinoid and it leads inferiorly to infratemporal fossa along with foramen ovale. Foramen spinosum transmits middle meningeal vessels and nervous spinosus. Nervous spinosus is the recurrent meningeal branch of mandibular nerve. So this neurovascular bundle which is passing through foramen spinosum supplies the major part of meninges in the middle cranial fossa. Now let's talk about foramen lacerum. Lacerum means irregular. So this is an irregular foramen which is present between the body of the spinoid and apex of petrous temporal. So if we see the petrous temporal, so if we trace the medial end of petrous temporal, it gets narrowed to form apex. Foramen lacerum transmits only two structures. One is the meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and the other one is emissary vein. And in living, this foramen lacerum is filled with the cartilage. Importance of foramen lacerum is two foramens open above to foramen lacerum. So the two foramens are carotid canal and pterygoid canal. Carotid canal contains internal carotid artery and its sympathetic plexus. And nerve to pterygoid canal contains nerve to pterygoid canal or median nerve which is formed by the union of greater petrosal and deep petrosal nerves. Let's talk about the features of petrous temporal. Petrous temporal is like triangular thick part of temporal bone having a medial end called as apex. So anteriorly this apex makes a shallow depression which lodges trigeminal ganglion. So this depression is referred as trigeminal fossa and the ganglion is present within the pouch formed by dura mater which is called as trigeminal cave and if we trace laterally, lateral to the apex, there is an elevation over the petrous part. This prominent elevation is arcuate eminence. Arcuate eminence is produced by superior semicircular canals which is a part of internal ear and along the upper border of the petrous temporal it is grooved by 
a sinus called superior petrosal sinus which is a paired dural venous sinus present on each side over the superior border of petrous temporal this sulcus superior petrosal sulcus the margins of this group provide attachment to tentorium cerebelli so tentorium cerebelli is a fold of dura mater which is tent like fold separating the cerebrum from cerebellum and apart from all these features we can see some grooves running laterally in the middle cranial fossa and these grooves are these markings are made by middle meningeal vessels and these grooves are even appreciated on inner surface of skull cap or calvaria so this completes important features of middle cranial fossa